Hi, on the woodpecker today, I'm making a brand new CNC. And to do that, I convert an old CMM into a CNC. Over the years, I made several modifications to my CNC to make it work better. Mm, but they didn't always improve it. Like when I put those lead screws. They're so small and long that at some point the machine starts to oscillate and even stops. To my great despair, I had to put back the driving belts. Uh, they break at least twice a year, on top of not being precise. Okay, uh, you can see that the lead screws are not better. But the worst part of this machine is its flexibility. It bends so much, it's almost impossible to use for precision work. So I've decided to make a new CNC rather than try to make this one work. I started by buying a bunch of high precision ball screws. Pierre came to the shop to figure out how we can make a rigid CNC with this. At the beginning of October 2020, before we even started, Pierre told me to buy this CMM. If, like me, you don't have a clue what a CMM is, well, it's a high precision, three-dimensional measuring tool. In fact, this machine dates back to 1990. Just by looking at the 7-inch granite top, the granite beam for the X, and all the rest, which is cast iron, I'm sure there won't be any flex with this. Unlike extruded aluminum. But I have a way to go. All this was put inside my trailer with a forklift. <laughs> I don't have one. But at least it's possible to move the base around with René's help. To help us unload it, I put the pallet closer to the back of the trailer. Bring this closer to the door and with a bit of elbow grease, we were able to push the trailer inside the shop. With a chain block, we were able to lift it and get rid of the trailer. Then we can put this on its base. After making sure it's well seated, we use a pallet lift and put it out of the way. A pallet lift is not optional here. I even bought a used one after this. Uh, I guess the weight of this to be approximately 1500 pounds. I try one of my ball screws just to see if this can work. I'm super excited to see that it does. A couple of days later, Pierre and Philippe come to take some measurements. Pierre also films every moving part. In fact, this machine floats on air. I'm telling you, it's incredible to see all this move so easily. Pierre makes some plans, so we'll be able to modify this into a CNC. Over a 12-month period, Pierre and Philippe machined several parts. I wish I could explain what Pierre is doing, but I have no clue what he's doing. The obvious thing is that he removes a lot of material on one big piece of aluminum. At one point, I came to see Pierre so he could modify my spindle bracket. One thing I can say is that both of them worked like crazy to make all the necessary parts to make my CNC work. You don't have to be an expert to see this. The precision is unbelievable. Since they're mostly made of aluminum, the weight impact is minimal. After almost a year, Pierre came back to the shop to install all the parts they made. They are machined so they can fit on the already existing anchors of the machine. All of us try to install the X-screw, <laughs> but some modifications are needed. 
Pierre tries to install the bracket he did for the Z screw, but we're missing some bolts. He decided to glue the brackets he made for the Y. Using special epoxy, we glue this under the granite top. Now that I'm alone, I can work on the piece that goes there. Philippe tried to grind part of the metal, but this was not enough. I used a Dremel to make a bigger opening. Now it's possible to put everything in place to move the x-axis, including the ball screw. Finally, I have one axis working. When Pierre comes back for the second time, he manages to finish the installation of the z-axis. But it's just here that we realize that the part he made for the y-axis is not long enough. He has to modify it. I now have two working axes. But having an exposed screw near that much dust is asking for trouble. So I'm going to do something to prevent that. To stop most of the dust, I'm going to use some tin brooms. After putting the bolts in place, I can screw this directly on the screw. It's a good start, but I still need a lot more to stop the dust. This is way better, but I will add a second broom on the other side. With two brooms, I'm satisfied. I spray some varnish. This way, the dust won't stick to bare wood. I also add a bunch of rubber seals on the top and at the bottom of the screw. The first dust protection is done. I still have the x-axis to do. As a matter of fact, it's mostly the same procedure. The big difference is that it's longer and I stain the wood black. Just like for the other one, it has two brooms and a plexiglass window to see if there's dust inside. When Pierre comes back with his modified bracket, we realize that the ball screw is too far away and it's binding. I use another of my ball screws and we make a test. We want to see if moving the screw outside would make it work better. And it does. So Pierre is forced to rethink all the y-axis. For a fourth time, in five weeks, Pierre and Philippe come back to install the Y ball screw. The final touches are made here, like the hole for this bracket. The last thing to do is to bolt it in place. With this last bolt, my three axes are working super fine. Even before having a proper table, I make my first test by cutting some padlocks that we brought to the Christmas fair we went to last December. See how it's moving well. I'm super happy. I also make more tests by carving longer stuff. In fact, this is what I mostly do with my CNC. So I carved two plaques that we also brought to the fair. This is day and night compared to the quality of my old CNC. But I'm far from being finished. I also need to cover this screw. Like the other two, it has two rooms. Uh, 
there's a bit of dust on the table. It's normal, it's a CNC. I want to push away most of the dust before it can hit the air bearings. So I stick some window seals on pieces of wood. In fact, I made six of them that I screw on the cast iron of the CNC. Ah, it's not over yet. I need a MDF table. I use one inch thick MDF. The first layer will go here. Ah, but I need to drill some holes for bolting this to the granite table. Since I now have a super precise CNC, I use it to drill the holes. But I don't drill right through. I finish the job now. I bolt this to the table and drill the remaining three holes. I now have the first layer of my table. If I don't have any problem with it, this will stay there forever. But I won't say the same for the top. I will be able to bolt stuff to the table with this layer. So I need to drill some holes for the T-nuts. The nuts are in place, but if I put the top like that, the dust will stay trapped in the holes. So I cut some spacers. I screw all this to the bolted MDF layer. The center screws are deeper and also made out of brass. But I'm still not done. I need to take care of the compressed air. First of all, I need a shelf for the air dehumidifier. Then I need to fix the filters to the base. When the holes are tapped, it's possible to screw the filters in place. Uh, in fact, there are more than filters on this. There are also an electric valve and an air regulator. In fact, there are a lot of air hoses on my new CNC. I've counted 23 air bearings on it. So a good compressor is a must. I also need to make all the electrical lookups. The switches go on the front and the plugs at the back. I'm sure that just like me, you think that all this wiring <laughs> looks like crap. So I'm going to use the original cavity to hide all the wires and water hoses. Nah, it's not always easy, but I manage it in the end. I still have the water hoses to hide. And voila, all the wires and hoses are out of the way. But I haven't installed the end stops yet. The one on the z-axis is a bit different. Because on this one, I can move its position by moving this block up and down. I need to do something for the wires at the back. For this, I'm going to use the original gutter. But with all the things that I've added, <laughs> it doesn't fit anymore. I need to modify it. Perfect, the wires are less noticeable. Speaking of hiding ugly wires, I will put back this cover in place. To help me align stuff on the table, I burn a line at every centimeter on the table. To finish this, I need to turn the laser around, align it to the top corner and finish the burning. Finally, my new CNC is completely finished. We only need to put it in its place. I'm super happy with my new CNC. Yes, it's 50% smaller than my old one, but a thousand times more rigid. For now, I only had time to make some Christmas presents with it. Ah, you'll see that next December. I'm super happy with the results. The precision is incredible. I have so many projects that I've postponed because I wasn't happy with my old CNC. I hope I will be able to make some of those this year. I predict 
that you'll see this working in future episodes of The Woodpecker. Thank you.